Filling a shape with words may be quite intimidating, but it's actually quite an easy process. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to fill a shape with words. And I'm going to throw in lots of the tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. Hi, I'm Kelly Rousseau, representing Creative Fabrica, and let's get started. The first part of this process is choosing a font that you're going to use. There are many different kinds of fonts that you can use, but with this kind of project, generally the simpler, the better. If this is your first project, I would suggest using only one font. If you're feeling adventurous, you can add an extra font to add some variety to your project. I'm going to be using the flower and honey font from Creative Fabrica. So all you need to do is click on download, Open up the zip file as soon as it downloads, double click on the OTF font and click install. If you already have Silhouette Studio open, you will need to close it and open it up again as it won't recognize the font immediately until the program refreshes. Next, we're going to choose a shape for our design. When it comes to choosing the shape, make sure that you don't choose a shape that is too detailed. Try and keep your shape as simple as possible. The more intricate your shape is, the smaller your words will need to be in order to maintain the borders. It will also take a lot longer to design and may not come out looking exactly how you intended. If you use a very intricate design, you may lose the shape of the design entirely and it could come out looking something like this. While it does look super cool, it's not exactly what I was going for when I had the original shape of the Christmas tree in mind. So keep that in mind when you are choosing your shape. I'm going to be using a basic Christmas tree shape from this Christmas tree SVG bundle. I have saved the Christmas trees PNG to my computer. Because I'm using the free version of Silhouette Studio, I won't be able to bring in any SVG files. So if you have the SVG file and if you have business edition, you can just drag in the SVG file. Otherwise, you can click file, open, navigate to where you've saved the PNG file and click OK or you can simply drag it into Silhouette Studio. Next, I'm going to delete everything in this file that I don't need. I only want the one little tree, so everything else I can delete. So I'm going to right click, release, compound path. It separates the object into multiple different objects. And I'm going to leave everything selected, click shift on my keyboard, and deselect the tree that I want to use so that everything else is selected and we can just click delete and then it's all gone. I'm going to make the tree a little bit bigger by dragging out the corner. And now I'm going to pull in my words into this project. But before I do that, I want to change a few things. I'm going to change the color fill to white. Because the tree is black, I want it to contrast so that I can see where the words are being placed. Next, I'm going to go to the text style panel and I'm going to change it to the font that we've just installed to our computer. So I'm going to scroll down until I get to F and I'm going to select the block style font. I'm then going to change the text size to something a little bit smaller. This makes adding in your text a lot easier as it is all already going to be the font that we're going to use and you will be able to see it. Now we can start adding in the words that we want to use. And like I said, keep in mind that the more words that you use, the better you're going to retain the shape of your object. So we're going to click on A and then I'm going to click somewhere on my screen and I'm going to start typing out the words that I want to use. So as I'm going to be using a Christmas tree, I'm going to be using Christmas themed words, but you can make this whatever you want. I have a list of about 20 words that I tried to think up. And if you're struggling to find words to add to your list, then you can always just Google ways to describe Christmas or ways to describe a mom or anything that fits the project that you're trying to create. So I already have a list of our 20 words. So I'm going to type them all out. And you can do this in both uppercase and lowercase. It is totally up to you. Once we've typed the first word, we're going to click the text box again and type in our next word. And continue doing this until we have all of the words on our screen. We do want to keep the words separate so we can work with them individually. 
Now that we have all of our words, we can start adding them to our shape. I'm just going to move them onto the white so that I can see them a little bit better. Before we get started with adding our words, I like to always have a duplicate because I'm probably going to add the word more than once in this tree. So I'm going to select all of my words. As you can see, they're all individual. I'm going to right click and duplicate so that I have a copy of the words on the side and I can use them over and over again. So I'm going to select the first word and move it over to the base of the tree. Here is where you can start playing around with size. The words don't all have to be the same size. I do find it helpful sometimes, but we can decrease the size of the word and fit it so that it sits just in the base of the tree, just like that. And when you're sizing your words, make sure that they fit onto the edges. So they just touch the edges or just overlap the edges just a little bit. You can rotate your words as well to create a little bit of visual interest by hovering over the little green dot at the top of the word and clicking down and rotating it. I'm holding shift on my keyboard so that I get a perfect 90 degree rotation. And then I can click on the word and drag it up to the side. I can then increase the size and create some visual interest into my project. You can have them facing in different directions. And if you want to, you can even have some in all caps. And you can continue this process until you have the entire shape filled up. And of course, you can add as many or as few words as you want. You can have the words really big. You can have them very small. You can have a combination of both of them, capitals, lowercase. And like I said, you can even add in an additional font if you feel like being adventurous. And the font duos that I find on Creative Fabrica generally for me are the best ways of pairing two fonts because somebody has already done the work of making them look good together for me. And once you've finally added all of your words, your design is almost finished. Now there are still a few things that you can do to your design. So I'm going to just move the tree away from the design so we have the design visible. And I'm going to select everything on my canvas, all of the words that I've added. And I'm going to change the color from white to, it doesn't really matter, let's go red or black or anything like that. Now it's at this point where you can do one of two things. The first one is to weld your design so that it's any overlapping letters won't be cut out separately. The second thing that you can do is to change the colors. If you wanted a few of your words, random words here and there to be changed into a different color, you can select them and change the color so that you can have a little bit of variety within your design and you can really go to town and have a lot of fun with it. If you're going to be welding your design, I would suggest selecting it, right click, duplicate, so that you have a spare to change if you want to. I always do this whenever I'm working with a design like this in Silhouette Studio so that I have an original copy off to the side. I'm going to right click and group that one so that it is one object that moves in itself. So now we can take this design, we can right click and weld it so that any overlapping sections won't cut each other. And then we can right click again and make it a compound path. This makes it one solid object that you can then again move just like that. And now you can take this design, you can print it out, you can use it for print and cut stickers, you can use it on sublimation, you can have so much fun with any of the designs that you create. I would love to hear what other kind of videos you want to hear for Silhouette Studio. Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe if you enjoyed the content. You can check out more Creative Fabrica Studio tutorials on the Creative Fabrica Studio Tips and Tricks channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.